Okay, last week I was explaining about uh, this concept. Concept of uh, the first step in uh, scheduling is basically to identify the project. Perhaps when you enter into tender, you already know what kind of project. Okay, and then second step, you develop WBS. We will talk about WBS in our next slide anyway. And then uh, the following step is basically uh, calculating the activity duration. The issue is that how do you calculate activity duration? Is it by guessing? No, actually it is not. It, it has a base uh, calculation based on what we call a productivity rate. Okay, productivity rate calculation. Well, sometimes people call it output capacity. It is the same thing anyway. Output capacity. It could refer to the machine. Normally machine, we refer to output capacity of the machine, whereas a uh, human being, we can uh, refer to labor output. Okay. Relying on past experience. Well, the easiest way to get the productivity rate is by looking at the previous project. That's why when you are contractor, if you are contractor, for instance, you should keep your productivity rate, uh, productivity rate database. You can put it in Excel or whatever, develop some kind of uh, simple system so that you can use again and again. Okay, that is for own usage because productivity rate or output capacity it really depends on uh, each organi org organization. Even though if you copy the productivity rate from other organization, it's not going to work uh, well with uh, your work method. Well, you can, you can use that things as a uh, base, base, but then a lot of adjustment have to be made anyway, okay? Then using standard guide, unfortunately, even in Malaysia, we do not have, we still do not have this standard guide. Uh, we have heard that certain people might develop those things during their PhD thesis or whatever. But again, when you do your PhD, you can do something with regard to productivity uh, rate or whatever, but it is not going to be comprehensive. Just imagine construction is very huge. When we talk about bridges, when we talk about high rise building, when we talk about uh, residential house, there are many types. So different, different type of house, different type of building will require different set of productivity. And we just imagine each of the construction will use different methodology, work method, different machine, different uh, workforce with a variation of skill. So they are not going to be the same, but at least uh, guide is just a standard, okay? Standard that you can basically refer to you need to do a lot of modification. In US, they do have uh, this kind of manual or whatever, which, well, there you can use that one, but here is quite difficult. Okay, so I was talking about, uh, I was giving you an example of uh, material, uh, moving out on the material, excess material from construction site. Okay, productivity rate. I was trying to get uh, to explain this thing, this concept when our internet connection was uh, very poor at that time. Okay, productivity. Let me use different color. Okay, productivity. What is productivity? Productivity is equivalent to output over input. Output, we can relate to quantity. And then input is basically time, time needed. So that's why in order to calculate productivity, uh, the equation is related to quantity. Where do we get the quantity? This is from our BQ, bill of quantity. Bill of quantity, you can get this thing from a contract document. Contract document, or if, uh, your contract is a lump sum kind of contract. You are the one, for instance, lump sum. So lump sum contract doesn't have the quantity given by the client. Then you as a contractor, in order for you to do planning, 
you need to figure out about the bill of quantity of each of the material you see so you, you need to do your estimating perhaps some of you are taking the uh, project estimating class this semester so you will get an idea of uh, what we call taking off taking off is normally being used as a method to quantify the uh, what we call the amount of material for each of the uh, of each element of the buildings almost everything nowadays we can even uh, we can calculate because uh, everything can be determined uh? now with the help of certain software perhaps we can make things faster so okay going back to our equation so i would say p equivalent to q over t simple thing let's say painter let's say painter one painter laborer for instance he can paint uh, 10 square meter of uh, wall let's say uh, we want to engage a painter to, to to paint our wall okay let's say the normal rate for the painter this is just an assumption 10 square meter in one hour so this is what we call productivity rate when the word rate is there meaning to say something must be divided by something that is what what we call rate productivity rate and unit rate is not the same unit rates is meant for the cost cost meaning to say how much is that item cost per unit okay per unit in term of length in term of uh, square meter in term of square foot whatever things okay but we are talking about productivity rate okay now let's assume that uh, we do have a wall of 1000 square meter to be painted to be given to the to this uh, guy laborer to finish up the job and we want to know in terms of time how many days this guy require to complete 1000 meter of square foot of wall to be painted okay so now how to get this thing so this is basically duration duration of painting activities so go back to our equation now the q is 1000 is the one that we have decided t is unknown but how about productivity productivity is based on this guy 10 square foot over one hour you see when you uh, the equation mathematical equation t equivalent to 1000 square foot divided by 10 and then one hour so this thing will cancel out and then cancel out what's left is basically 100 hour if for instance you assume for for simple purposes one day this guy is working for 10 hours uh, per day see and then you get 10 days so you see the painting work uh, as an activity then we can input this thing into our microsoft project for instance painting of the wall equivalent to 10 days how do you get that 10 days based on calculation it is not based on assumption there must be basis where do you get this thing that's why during construction in order to monitor and control construction activities or project uh, after, after you uh, after planning process you implement the work so during implementation the next process is basically monitoring and control one of the things that you need to monitor and control is basically productivity of your workforce or of your equipment etc etc why because it has relationship with the duration that you already plan for instance if you initial plan is basically you will get uh, a guy with this kind of uh, productivity rate right? what if for instance you will get a lousy guy or not very really skillful guy which can only do painting eight square meter per hour then you will know it will affect uh, the productivity of the work meaning to say the work is going to be to be completed less and less so your project will be extended uh, not 10 days could be 12 days 
or so. So from that, you already know you need to do something. Okay, you need to do something. You need to revise the planning in such a way. Uh, let's say you want to maintain 10 days, the original planning. So you must uh, extend the work, for instance, during instead of working for 10 hours, that guy should be working for 12 hours. Well, at the end of the day, you notice that there is an extra cost will be incurred uh, due to what you plan and then what is the, uh, the, the reality. Well, that is part and parcel of the construction anyway. You are not going to have a perfect uh, plan. Okay, now, um, after this, we are going to go into uh, network diagrams such as Aero diagram and then uh, A AON diagram, PDM diagram, whatnot. Inside those diagram, they are calculation that we need to be completed. This calculation is basically related to critical path method. Critical path method is a method of calculation to generate uh, what we call the longest path, which means critical path. Uh, along with that, we will know basically when certain activity will start, end, and whatnot. So there are a few terminology, early start, early finish, late start, and late finish, total float, and free float. Okay, so I want, uh, okay, let me just give a simple let me add one blank page here. In order to explain all these things, okay, you will see this thing when you uh, when we go into the network diagram. Then you will see the relationship between each of these things. Okay, now. Okay. Let's assume. When we draw AOA diagram, AOA diagram, okay, the uh, diagram will look like this: one activity, one node, er, followed by arrow, and the name of the activity could be A, B, C, whatever. Then followed by duration, then close by one node. We can uh, put uh, a few things inside this diagram, such as early start early finish, late start, late finish. And similarly, let's say this is activity B, duration, close by one. This is not number one, number two, number three. And again, for activity B, because there is no space to write down everything, so by right for activity B, this, uh, uh, what we call a uh, empty space will be filled by early start or B. This is early finish of B. This will be late start of B. This is late finish. That is the iteration, meaning to say for each of the activity, there must be a early start, early finish, late start, late finish date. Okay. And it will uh, iterate or meaning to say it will repeat after itself. That is the concept, except that for AOA diagram, because of the space inside the node is not much, so and that wording early start for B, for instance, will take over the early finish of uh, uh, A uh, spacing or space inside there, okay, in terms of numbering. But when we draw AON diagram, so activity A and B will be reflected by this thing, A and B and followed by arrow. Arrow is just the relationship between A and B. So meaning to say finish to start relationship. And you notice that when we draw AOA diagram, there are many compartments that we can put in. Okay. There are many ways to uh, draw even what inside the compartment. Uh, you can use whatever, whatever method or whatever legend the most important thing when we draw, and if you want to draw something different, you must draw your legend. Okay, how the legend looks like. And in uh, if in Malaysia, for instance, 
Uh, previously, we have been using a lot of British standard. Uh, if you refer to British standard of a critical path method, there are ways to draw this kind of diagram, okay? But uh, normally they're almost similar anyway. So inside this one, this is activity A, activity B. And this is normally you put duration, duration of B. And then this is the early start of A, early start of B. Uh, early start of A, early finish, eh? early finish of A. You notice that early start of A and B in the uh, arrow diagram, it look a little bit messy, but inside this AON diagram, everything is inside the box because the left side of the box uh, reflects start. This one reflect finish. This one for AOA, the left node indicates start. And after that, uh, at the end of arrowhead, we call it finish. So they are similar. And then late start, late finish. So similarly for B, early start, early finish, late start, late finish. See, now for AON diagram, uh, it is better in such a way all the values that belong to that activity basically is inside the box. So you cannot uh, mix around with anything else. So it is it's just there to see, okay? Later on, you will notice um, uh, why uh, the AON diagram or PDM diagram nowadays uh, gain more popularity due to the fact that it can hold a lot of information in uh, one box plus everything that we need is there compared to AOA diagram, okay? And then the empty box, for instance here, we can put total float and then total float for B. All right, that is for, for instance. And in fact, we can even uh, put uh, more information inside A, B, such as we might not have the space for free float. We can put it there, free float. So everything is there, you see? Okay. So now the issue is that what is early start, early finish, late start, and late finish? That is the issue, okay? Uh, which this uh, diagram is, uh, uh, the previous slide is trying to explain to you. But you can read the definition, but I'm just going to give you one example which perhaps it will simplify the understanding. Okay, let's put another one here. Okay, let's assume. Okay, let's assume. Let's make some assumption. Okay. All right. Okay, let's make assumption. Uh, our class, yes, simple. Our class today start at, put it here, make it different color. Okay. Our class today start at uh, 10, 10 a.m. and then finish at uh, 1 p.m. That is the time frame of our class, basically three hours. Okay, three hours, but it is not totally three hours because every hours, if you, uh, if we are in the normal face-to-face -face class, normally for every one hour, we are going to have 10 minute break. That is the concept. So meaning to say, if we start uh, for, for every hour, we do have 10 minutes break. So meaning to say, if we continue on uh, the class uh, straight away, from the beginning until the end, we do not have a break. So we start at 10 and then we are going to finish at 12.30. Oh, no, 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 uh, yes, 12.30. Because 10 minute break for each hour. So we need to say 30 minutes. 30 minutes is the, uh, the time that we can utilize uh, for the break, okay? So that is the concept. So if, for instance, if we go straight from 10 a.m. without break, okay, until the end of uh, uh, supposedly our class uh, duration, okay, not the time frame. The time frame is three hours. That the, this is the time frame, three hours. But the actual class is only two 
hours and 30 minutes. Two and a half hours. Okay, so we are going to finish at 12.30. So, 10. Okay, that is one scenario. One scenario. Now, let's assume, let's assume if we are planning, we do some kind of planning or scheduling backward. Backward meaning to say, we want to finish at one. Okay, we want to finish at one. So if we, we want to finish at one, and our class basically uh, straight away, we do not want to have, to have a break. What time that we can start? The latest time. So we are going to start at 10.30 a.m. And we can still finish 1 p.m. within time frame of a uh, uh, time frame given to us. So just, you, you just imagine this is an activity an activity okay this is the time because when we talk about scheduling it involves time time can be uh, put in term of uh, hours in term of uh, daily in term of minutes even in term of month or in term of year we can basically change in a real activities normally we put that thing in term of days for easy purposes so I would say for the first scenario, let's say uh, scenario uh, A, the 10 a.m. timing, this is what we call early start. If we start early, as early as possible, then for sure we are going to finish as, uh, we are going to finish early. This is what we call EF, early finish time or early finish date if you refer to the date so this this is uh, where the word early start and early finish come from and how about if we do the scheduling backward backward meaning to say we want to finish as as late as possible the latest that we can start our project this is what we call late start and if we start late for sure, we are going to finish late. This is what we call late finish. Ah, so just uh, imagine, normally contractors or in whatever situation, when the client give the contractor two years period to complete the project, when contractor doing the planning, actually the contractor can fit everything within maybe one and a half years. Maybe within one and a half years, but the contractor do not tell the client that they can finish and they can finish one and a half years. They will spread the activity in such a way that it will uh, fill up the two years. You know why? Because if you cram the activity in one and a half years and you, you tell client that you can finish, meaning to say, you do not have extra time anymore. Every day you have to, you, you are going to have a very tight schedule. So meaning to say you are working under a lot of pressure, which is something that we do not want because the profit is already predetermined. Even though you, you can finish earlier or late, let's say the profit is there already. So why you want to rush uh, making, uh, you are putting a lot of pressure on your workforce your machine or even on yourself. So that's why do things as, uh, as practical as you, you can be. That is a concept. So meaning to say, some of the activity later on we will see, will have some kind of early start and early finish date, and then late start and late finish date, which is different from early start and early finish. So meaning to say this timing and this timing is different from early start and early finish. If we are going to see that during the context of many activities in the uh, network diagram. For sure, if we draw uh, a simple activity like A and B in one line, you are not going to see those things yet, but later on you will, you will see and there are purposes why basically we need to calculate this thing, especially for the purpose of uh, we want to play around with uh, what we call uh, prioritize, okay? Prioritizing 
the critical activity compared to non-critical activity, etc. And you notice that here, 30 minutes, this 30 minutes is the one equivalent to total float. So what is the total float? Total float is the, the free time uh, that certain activity have with respect to the final project duration. So total float uh, is the amount of free time of one activity have with respect to the overall project duration. I would say this is overall project duration. Okay, overall project duration, which is uh, we finish at 1 p.m. So the time, the remaining time that we have is 30 minutes. So meaning to say this activity uh, in scenario A, I can drag or let's say I take a longer time to explain something. So I can finish two hours and 40 minutes, but still I do have time because 30 minutes is the free time. Let's say uh, in the afternoon, let's say the let's say you will have another class exactly at 1 p.m. Uh, now you see, so I, whatever it is, I cannot uh, go beyond the 30 minutes. If I go beyond 30 minutes, then you will, you will uh, join the other class, which is basically late, or that class will start late. When that class start late, and then uh, they will finish late also. Uh, that is what we call extent extension of time. Okay, has been extended due to the fact that we already encroach into uh, extra time than what we have. Okay, that is the total float. Later on, you will notice when we put everything into the uh, network diagram, but now it may be a little bit blur. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now I want to explain about the concept of free float. Okay, in order to see the free float, okay, before we go into that, okay, you notice that this is the late start. How about the total float for the late start? Okay, for if I know, I consider the activity uh, duration, the time frame is at 10 a.m., for sure the total float basically remain the same 30 minutes also except that the 30 minute, I can play around. I can start at 10, 10, 10, 10. I can start at 10, 20, or the latest I can start at 10, 30. So when I start at 10, 30, meaning to say I already utilized the total float, the free time. So the free time is not there anymore. I already utilized at the beginning, see, at the beginning of the project. But in the scenario A, this is like scenario B, uh, the free time is at the end of the project. So, so in certain scenario, it depends. Uh, once we do have the free time, we it is up to you, up to us to decide how are we going to use those things for our own sake. Okay. So now we go into the free float concept. Let me erase this thing first. Free float concept. Okay, even though the word might sound a, bit, a little bit the same, free float and total float, but they do have uh, some differences. In order to see the free float, I will, uh, again, I will use this thing. This is the three hours concept, but now I will split the activity. Let's say the first activity is for 50 minutes, a lecture, then I then break, then 50 minutes, then break. So, so this is 50 minutes, this is 50 minutes. So we start at 10 a.m. and then 1 p.m., the finishing time, okay. So you notice from activity, let's say activity A, oh, sorry. Let's say this is activity A, B, and C. I split the lecture into three uh, small session. session. Session A, B, and C. So each of the session is 50 minutes. So it is the same as the above uh, scenario, scenario A, two hours and 30 minutes, if we do that thing uh, straight away. But now it is being split. And you notice be between the split, there is a small gap, we call it break, 10 minutes break. Break, 
This one is also 10 minutes. And this 10 minutes is basically free float. This 10 minutes is what we call free float. So what is the definition of free float? When we want to associate free float, we must associate free float with the activity. Let's say, what is the free float of activity A? So the free float of activity A, the amount of free time, this is what we call free time. The amount of free time that activity A has that can be used or can be utilized without encroaching the starting. This is the start, huh? the start of the following activity. So between A and B, they are interrelated. Okay. So after A, then B will be uh, will start uh, the activity. But during this time, this is what we call the free time. So this is what we call free float. How about the free float for B? Okay. Remember the definition of free float of B or, or any activity, you must look at what is the, uh, the following activity. The following activity of B is basically C. Okay, this C. So we, con we focus on this area. If we draw this thing as in bar chart, now I'm showing you in terms of bar chart so that you can see the timing. Okay, so B will finish uh, after 50 minutes from the starting date. Then 10 minutes is the break. Then only uh, C will basically start. So B can be extended or if something happened during uh, the, the session, if we, have, we do have problem with the internet or whatnot, we have 10 minutes to fix those things without encroaching into the, the next activity. Okay, if for instance, uh, lecture A is uh, being uh, conducted by, uh, by Ali, B by uh, another, another guy, boy, for instance, C is uh, Kevin, for instance, different lecturer. So that lecturer is waiting for his period. So you only have 10 minutes. When you basically delay activity B, then this guy, C, will not be happy. Okay. At the end of the day, he will uh, encroach into the, the timing of the project duration. This, this is not something that we, we like, even, do, even for the uh, lecture or even for the real construction work, because normally the timing has been set, so we do not want to encroach into the end of the activity or whatnot. Okay, how about the free float for activity C? C. And you notice that C is the end of the uh, timing for the project as well. So the free float for C is equivalent to zero. So C doesn't have any free float because if uh, that guy is going to delay the activity, then he will encroach into the uh, project duration period. Okay. So why exactly that we want to know what is the total float, what is the free float of an activity? Later on, it has uh, the application for the purpose of uh, analyzing delays, for the purpose of um, uh, what we call uh, analyzing or claiming for extension of time and whatnot. That is the, the reason why we want to know those things. So in our manual calculation we will show you how to calculate those things and how to generate all those data but once you use the software such as microsoft project or primavera all this value early start early finish late start late finish total float and free float is going to be auto generate the computer will do the calculation for you uh, but before we go into that total total float is not going to be called total float instead it will call Total slack. Total slack. Free float will be called free slack. Okay, the word slack is basically uh, something that fall behind. Okay, that is the concept. So, but whatever it is, total float or free float is for me the easiest way to remember is the free time. The free time of uh, uh, the free time that once uh, the an activity have with regard to what? For instance, free float with regard to the starting of the next activity. But if we are talking about total uh, float, 
is free time one, uh, and activity have with regard to the overall project duration. So we must um, look at the total float um, in accordance with the path where that activity uh, sit in, okay, the path. Eh? All right, some CPM uh, float, we already mentioned critical contingency slippage. You can read those things. That is the uh, terminology. Okay. Now we go into how to develop a network diagram. It doesn't matter whether you are using AOA, AON, and subsequently PDM diagram. Okay. PDM diagram. The, uh, the uh, work that you have to go through is almost similar. First, list all activities. How do you get these activities? From WBS. In our next slide, we are going to go into this thing. Assign the time and resource required. So, assign time means to say you calculate activity duration. Activity duration. Not the overall project duration, not yet. But Automatically, once you calculate activity duration, when you put that thing inside the overall network diagram, then only uh, overall project duration will be uh, derived. Okay. Resources required. Okay. Resources and uh, duration are interrelated because whatever amount of resources or type of resources that you choose, for sure it will influence the duration of an activity. For instance, if you want to make things faster, well, sim as simple as you put more resources, you uh, extend the, the, what we call the working hours for that day. You bring in a bigger capacity of machinery. You change the uh, work method instead of um, what we call conventional construction. In Malaysia, we do have definition of uh, IBS, but in different countries, they do not use the concept of IBS. They call it off-site construction. Okay, so normally off-site construction or IBS is meant for uh, faster, uh, what we call uh, faster construction because everything is predetermined in terms of the element. We just uh, bring them to the side and then fix them together. Okay, number three, assign the immediate predecessor. Okay, predecessor. Well, predecessor, what is predecessor? You notice, let's say A, B, C. I do have another one, I call it C. So the word predecessor is what activity that come before an activity. The predecessor, predecessor is by default in any computer scheduling, it, they, they normally uh, put this uh, thing as default, meaning to say they, they want to know what is the preceding activity, activity before, that come before an activity. Then, Another way to, uh, to show the relationship between activity is using successor. Successor. Successor is basically what comes after an activity. For instance, this is activity A. What is the predecessor of A? Okay, let me see. Let me put it here. A, B, C. This is activity this is predecessor, this is successor. What come after A is basically none, because A is the beginning. So once you see this kind of listing, then automatically you will know that A is the starting activity because there is nothing come before A. Then what come after B, this is B. You notice what come after B is basically A. So you put it here. What come after C is basically B. That's how you draw, uh, that's how you read the listing of activity. First, you must list activity. Then only basically you can input uh, them into the computer, whatever, according to the right format. The computer will not read 
according to the naming of the activity, but instead they use a, uh, the auto-generate what we call uh, I, an uh, ID for each activity. We will learn that thing later on. And then vice versa, instead of using predecessor and then we use successor. Successor is something that come after uh, that activity. For instance, what come after A? For sure it is B. So you write B. What come after B? C. And then what come after C? It's basically none. You see? Uh, you can uh, use either one. Uh, once people understand this concept of predecessor and successor, they can easily draw the diagram. So the most important things about uh, network diagram is the ability to draw the diagram because later on you will fill up the information with uh, many, many things based on the least information developed logical network. Then once you have the uh, relationship, then you can have the connection. Let's say you use arrow diagram, okay, whatever you connect them together. All right, for instance, if you use AOA diagram, then there will be connection, whatever, until the end of the diagram, for instance, okay? Compute the starting and finishing time. Ah, this is where you will calculate early start, early finish, early finish, late start, late finish, okay? And then uh, determine critical path. Okay, critical path when total float equal to zero, you will know that you will basically it indicate activity as critical activity. And when critical activity are interconnected together, they will form what we call critical path. Okay, critical path. Example, activities. When you draw the, into the real, uh, what we call a uh, network diagram, you will put the real name, okay? The real name of activity, for instance, piling, uh, stamp, uh, ground beam, slab, uh, column, wall, whatever. That is the real name. But for academic purposes, we simplify things. We just put A, B, C until whatever, okay? And then duration. Duration, normally you will put unit so that people will understand. Perhaps the simplest form is basically days. It could be week, it could be month, and then predecessor. And we don't have to uh, put immediate predecessor, okay? Uh, well, normally we'll put predecessor, so it is understood that predecessor is meant for immediate. What come immediately after or before that activity? So normally the word immediate will not be put into our whatever the title of this uh, column but you must understand when we put it predecessor it means the immediate predecessor what come exactly before even though we know that all the activity are interrelated from the beginning but we are interested to see the link between activity that immediately uh, related only okay so you notice activity a b c doesn't have the uh, predecessor. We call it nil, nil or none. So automatically, you know that A, B, C is the starting activity because it doesn't have activity before that. Okay, then D, D basically is connected from A. E is connected from B, that's how you read. And I, for instance, do have two activity connected. From that, we, you are, we are going to draw, you see, notice A, B, C without the predecessor, no predecessor, so starting activity. When you draw the diagram, okay, when you draw the diagram, it depends on people. Sometimes people put the arrangement of the uh, activity might be at the top, at the bottom, whatever, it will look different from uh, other people drawing and then the line could be tangling because you uh, you mix and mesh the activity in a different order it doesn't matter the most important thing is that you must have the relationship right the line could be tangling around 
So it is it is not wrong. Don't don't get confused. When, for instance, if you have line like 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 this, if for instance line like this, uh, no no no, it, it basically you want to show the relationship between here and here. So there is a tangling line. So there is nothing wrong. Then the most important thing is that let's say you want to to show to the people that hash uh, do have relationship with C, for instance. That is the most important thing, okay? So different people will draw differently, it doesn't matter, but the most important thing is how you connect them. Okay, let's take a look at our listing. A, B, C is the starting line. How about D? D, the predecessor is A. You notice A is here. So what we do is that we just simply connect this uh, with uh, one node and then connect into D. How about E? E basically the uh, the previous activity is B. Just connect those things together, and F is coming from C, G coming from C, and then I. You notice I. There are two. See I, E and E and F, E and F. So there are two activity together, and then J from G. And then uh, everything must be close with this. So this is what we call starting. Start. This is the ending note. So for all network diagram, when we call network diagram, it should basically have a closed loop. Closed loop. When it, go, when it goes around, doesn't matter how many branches that it will go, so it will close into one ending. Then only you can basically generate what we call critical path. Sometimes when you draw critic, uh, what we call network diagram, there are activity which is not connected or which is not close to uh, the next, the following activity. Uh, then you have problem with regard to the critical path. Okay, so next, uh, the first step is basically uh, drawing. Draw the network diagram. Okay, now you already finished those things. Then you put the uh, what we call duration. Duration uh, underneath the arrow. You put the duration underneath the arrow so that you can uh, calculate those things. And then next. Okay, now you notice that. Remember, our concept is that here. This is arrow diagram. Early start, early finish, late start, late finish. So we are going to calculate, for instance, we start with zero. We, we do have one uh, slide, maybe next week, that will explain about the calculation of arrow diagram. Not today, but since it is here already, I just want to show you very quickly uh, how do we generate early start, early finish, late start, late finish to complete the calculation? Okay, so we start with, we always start with zero. This is manual calculation. We always start with zero. Zero, zero plus five equal to five. Five plus four equal to nine, see? And then we go into B first. Zero plus two equal to two. Then we go into C, zero plus one equal to one. All right, so now we already completed A, B, C. In terms of, this is what we call early start. This one is early finish. So we do the calculation from left to right. From left to right, this is what we call forward pass. The word is basically forward pass. Forward pass is to calculate early start plus duration equivalent to early finish. That is a simple formula. When we add up all the value with duration, then we will get early finish. Okay, now go into E. Okay, E. 2 plus 3 equivalent to 5. But you notice that I the issue is that what is the early start of I? This is the early start of I. Early start of I is equivalent to the early finish of E and F. 
So let's calculate the early finish of E is five. Okay, one figure. How about the early finish of F? So we start is uh, F basically start with uh, day one. One plus six equivalent to seven. You notice that I can only start when E and F completed. E will complete at five days, whereas I will complete at seven days. So which one do you prefer? Well, there is no choice actually. Logically, I when I have to wait for I, uh, both E and F completed, even though E completed at five days, but then F still going on because it take longer to complete certain work. So I have no choice uh, to, to start the work only after seven days, at the end of seven days. So meaning to say in, in real work, you will start on the eight days, but for the calculation purposes, that is the way we calculate, okay? So we, we choose the bigger value, bigger value. So now seven is inside the, uh, the box there. That's how you calculate. Okay, now we go into G. G, one plus two equivalent to three. Okay, and you notice that there are three activity, H, I, and J, going into this uh, box. This box, okay, indicate the late, uh, early start, early finish. Early finish, okay, early finish of um, the following activity. Could be H, could be I, could be J. So how about H? Nine plus five equivalent to 14. Uh, seven plus one equivalent to eight here. 3 plus 6 equivalent to 9. Between 8, 9, and 14, which is the bigger value? For sure, 14. So we take the bigger value. Meaning to say, our project can only finish in 14 days. It is impossible to finish in 9 days. Impossible to finish 8 days because there are still uh, other activity going on. And that is the concept. And at the end of the uh, drawing here, this early finish indicate the overall project duration. This is what we, we want. We want to know, previously, when you put everything like this, then basically there is no way that you, you, you will know when your project is going to complete. You only know the activity duration, but when you put them into uh, scheduling, in the network diagram, you put them into uh, the network and then uh, the logic and whatnot, then only you know. This project is going to be completed within 14 days. Okay, within 14 days. And you notice that this diagram, this diagram, uh, 14 days, they, they are four, one, two, three, four. Four paths. Four paths in this diagram. What does path mean? Path mean A, D, H. That will be path number one. And then path number two, B, E, I. So this is B, E, I. B, E, I. That will be path number two. How about path number three? C, F, I. This one. C, F, I. The last path is basically here, down here. C, G, C, G, J. All right. So if you notice, if you add up all the, the activity duration uh, following each of the path, let's say A, D, H, A, D, H, that will be equivalent to uh, 14 days. B, E, J. 5 plus 1 equivalent to 6. C, F, I. 1, 7, 8. 8 days. How about the last one? 6, 8, 9. 9 days. And there are 4 paths. And among the paths, there is only one uh, 
in this diagram, one, one longest path, the longest path is here, ADH, and equivalent to 14. This one is also equivalent to 14. This is the overall project duration. And you see the similarity between the longest path and then the project duration. So the project duration uh, normally or must basically take after the longest duration of an of a pass. So that pass is automatically and normally we will call it critical pass. So the critical pass is the longest duration required for a project to complete. Why it is critical and later on we will know. Okay, we can calculate uh, what we call total float for each activity. Okay, we can calculate this later on, not now. Okay, total float, free float. Okay, so critical path. Okay, now let's uh, use another example, AON diagram. Okay, AON diagram. Okay, AON diagram. So you notice that between AON diagram and AON diagram is by looking at the graphic. When the graphic looks like uh, the, the uh, circle and then an arrow, so it must be AOA diagram, as simple as that. So when they are square, okay, they are square and then arrow must be there because arrow show the relationship. So this is what we call AOA diagram, okay? AOA diagram, activity on node. Notice that A is being uh, shown inside a node, A, B, whatever. Okay, in this diagram, this is what we call early start. Early start, early finish. This one, this value. This value, uh, late start and late finish that belong to A. So each of uh, the uh, what we call activity do have early start, early finish inside the box. Okay, inside the box. By right, the box should be here, but because it is difficult to draw graphically, so we put it outside there, okay. All right, and you notice that this uh, diagram do have how many paths? One, two, three, four. There are four paths. The top one, we call it A, uh, B, E, A, B, E, H, and I, H, and J, J. That will be pass number one, okay? And then the second one is this one, this pass here, this one, A, B, F, we call it A, B, F, and J. There will be second one. And the third one, the direct uh, path from A, C, F, J. And the bottom one, A, D, G, J. And if you calculate the activity, calculate activity when to say you add up all the activity inside the path from the beginning until the end, okay, you will notice something. Let's start with A, B, A, B, E, H, J. Eight plus six equivalent to 14. 16, 26. This is what we call 26. And then A, B, H, J. This one is uh, 27. And then A, C, H, J. Five, 14, 24. And then A, D, 4, 5, 6, 16 only. So from that, you will notice something. The longest duration, the project will complete here. This is what we call overall project duration. Project duration, 27 days. And the one that we highlight in red, this is what we call the critical path. 
equivalent in terms of the overall project duration will take after the uh, duration in this path. Okay, in this path. Okay, that's why it is very important when we develop AOA diagram or AON or PDM diagram, we use critical path method in order to indicate overall project duration, that will be one thing. The critical path will be one thing. And in order to, to calculate the critical path, we must calculate total float. Total float. But from the diagram itself, we can know. If you do not want to uh, use that, uh, let's say the question asked you to identify critical path. I already mentioned to you, the easiest way is to look at each path, which path is basically take the longest, okay? Which is equivalent to the overall project duration anyway, but you can calculate total path, total float. How to calculate total float? Well, very simple. For AON diagram, it is very simple. Total float formula is equivalent to uh, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, minus early finish. For instance, for G, you notice the tot, uh, late finish is here, 17, 17 minus 6 equivalent to 11. Or you can use late start minus early start equivalent to 15 minus 4 equivalent to 11. So it is the same. So total float for this activity is 11. This one is also 11, okay? And then if you calculate for J, the one which is red, total float is zero because they are the same uh, numbering, zero, zero, zero. So now maybe you can see that early start and early finish, late start and late finish could have different timing. For instance, E. E early start is in eight days, finish in 14 days, but it can start as late as nine days and then finish on 15. Meaning to say, that is one day, what we call total float, free time that this activity has uh, with respect to uh, the, uh, what we call uh, within the path, within the path. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, this pass, A, D, J, the, the, the bottom one. You notice that A and J have total float of zero, whereas D and G have a total float of 11-ish. What does 11-ish mean? Okay, what does 11-ish mean? Okay, meaning to say, let's say activity D Instead of completed in one day, let's say there is a delay, whatever thing, this activity uh, delay by 11 days. Okay, so instead of a one, I will put this one as 12 because we add 11. What would happen to the calculation? Okay, let, let us calculate. 3 plus 12 equivalent to 15. 15 is here, 15 plus 2 equivalent to 17. 17. And you notice that 17 is equivalent to here. So 17 will, will, will go to here as well, uh, as well as H. They basically, they finish at the same time. Uh, within the time, because I add up 11. But what if I add up 12? 12 plus 1 equivalent to 13. You notice that what happened is that this 17 will go 18, will be 18, and the project will be completed at 28 days. You see, you notice that the total flow indicates how much amount of time an activity has with respect to the line, the path. So if, for instance, activity D, I already use up the all the total flow 11, they're meaning to say, even though G, we calculate the total float equivalent to 11, it does not mean that G will have uh, the luxury of 11 days uh, more. No, 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 no. They will share among each other. That is the concept of total float. Total float is the amount of free time being shared 
within the uh, path in contrary in contrary to what in contrary to what we call a uh, free float okay now let's go into the free float concept in order to see the free float free float only exists when uh, the situation is like this for instance f you know the f there are two arrow coming in when there are two arrow coming in uh, then there is probability of free float for one of the activity okay for instance activity c you notice activity C will finish at uh, the fifth day. So, the fi will finish at fifth day, whereas activity F will start at day eight. So, what does that mean? If, you, if we uh, make comparison between eight and five, free float can be defined simply as the early start of F minus early finish of C. So 8 minus 3 minus 5 equivalent to 3 days. So free float of 3 days. Activity C do have free float of 3 days. Uh, for instance, instead of uh, requiring uh, 2 days, let's say activity C require 5 days. 2 plus 3. So 2 plus 3 meaning to say 5, uh, 2, uh, 3 plus uh, 5 equivalent to 8, equivalent to 8. So 8 is still okay because the following activity will start at 8 also. So that is the maximum amount uh, activity C can be delayed. But what if instead of 3 days, I change 4 days. Now activity F will have to start at 9 days because Activity C, activity C will take longer time compared to activity B. So now you see the impact of an activity with regard to uh, how much amount of time do one activity have. So that's why we need to calculate all this value because it has some relationship with the, the, issue, work, the issue of delays. Later on, you will learn more in the second half of the semester but what i'm doing now in the first half of the, of the semester is just giving you the concept the overall concept first all right that would be the end of our uh, slide here and then okay we'll stop